Hi folks, today we'll start working on a large and very cool project. This is a 3D printer based on the original Delta robot. This is my second printer of such kind. The first has been working for two years. I have decided that it successfully passed test drive and it was time to create the second version. I want to note right away that what you will see in this series of videos, because I have a lot of material, which you will not find either in Russian or in English or other languages. This will be what is called truly unique content. There are no detailed video guides for assembly and configuration, because such printers that are based on the Delta robot are not produced, at least not yet. However, it can be made and assembled independently. For a start, a little history. The Delta robot was invented and patented by a man named Raymond Clevel in the early 80s. Moreover, from then to this day, Delta robots are used in production, on packaging and sorting lines. Thanks to the simple and lightweight design of the levers, such a robot can move with amazing speed and accuracy. Industrial designs can reach accelerations of up to 30G and the speed of the effector, it's also a working body, up to 10 meters per second. The smallest representative of this class was invented not so long ago. The robot is called Mili Delta and can perform up to 75 movements per second. The mini robot does not use electric motors, but piezoelectric drives. The dimensions of the robot are 15 by 15 by 20 mm, and the weight is only 430 mg. Now let's talk about the use of this robot as a 3D printer. It all started in 2009, when our compatriot Maxim Zavatsky decided to develop and assemble his desktop Delta robot. Now you can see it on the screen. The project was a success and Maxim wrote a short article on the kinematics of Delta robots about how you can derive kinematic formulas for this type of robots and even with examples of ready-made code in C. The article was written in English for the contest at the Trussin Robotics Forum. Maxim later published this material in Russian. I will leave a link in the description below the video. In 2010, the first amateur project appeared, authored by two members of the RepRap movement with the nicknames Energetic and Raynode. In 2013, the Rapid Delta project from David Ackers, a UK teacher, appears. He put his project on Kickstarter, but he didn't collect the required amount. In 2014, he decided to try his luck on Kickstarter again with the new project Rapid Delta Germ. Nevertheless, it also failed. Later, David posted the project free access on Thingiverse, where anyone can download it. In the same year, Firepick Delta by Neil Jensen appeared. This is probably the most serious and well-developed project to date. The robot is primarily positioned as an open-source electronics production system with 3D printing function. The device was conceived as a machine for creating printed circuit boards at home. The project is in the public domain, therefore you can download it, print all the details and assemble it yourself. In the same 2014, Icepeak Delta appears. The creators are Johem, Titian and Matt Kimball. Yes, yes, I stole the idea of a chipboard frame from these people. This project is also in the public domain. In 2015, our compatriot Sergei Dovzhenko publishes his first printer project based on a Delta robot called 3D Replicator. In 2016, the second version appears. This time, Sergei publishes a completed project, which anyone can download, print and assemble. He also has detailed instruction on how to build a printer and configure Marlin firmware on the site, as well as several useful related articles. Currently, Sergei is working on the third printer model and on the Marlin 2.0 firmware version of it, which is designed to work with 32-bit controllers. I have to say many thanks to Sergei, because my first Delta robot was based on his projects and tuned thanks to his articles. In 2017, the ADAPT 3D project appears. Four engineers and students at McGill University, located in Montreal, Canada, created it. The project was created to participate in the annual national competition. By the way, the project is among the winners for 2017 on the website of this competition. In the same year, I published a short article on the assembly of my first Delta robot, where I shared the experience of assembly and configuration. Now you can see the archive footage of one of the first test prints shot on potato. Here are more or less serious projects of such printers. There were a few garage and homemade products, but I could not find detailed materials such as drawings, parts, lists, materials and 3D models. And of course, one cannot fail to mention the Delta printers that you can buy. In 2012, Joan Royal introduced a prototype Delta printer called the Rostock in Seattle. Later, he creates on its basis the well-known COSOL. The Delta printer is a simplified version of the Delta robot. The addition of vertical guides with carriages made it possible to simplify assembly and create easily repeatable projects. It's also made it possible to simplify the code and enable such printers to work on boards with a 8-bit controller, for example on the well-known Arduino 2560. The Delta robot, on the other hand, requires a lot of computing power and works on an 8-bit Arduino with some reservations and problems. 
It may seem that Delta Printer is a more advanced version of the robot, but it's not. Yes, it's easier to manufacture, but the introduction of liner guides into the design also brought into it all the problems associated with them, which were not in the original design. First, these are high requirements and the dependence on the quality of guide shafts or rails, as in any other liner printer. Such guides tend to quickly wear out both the shafts themselves and liner bearings, wear, backlash, noisy work, etc. In the end, high quality shafts or rails of the right length are not cheap. The Delta robot is initially devoid of such shortcomings. The only thing that may sometimes have to be changed is the hinge joints. In the first version I have the usual spherical tips, and in the second I decided to try magnetic joints. Let us see how they show themselves. Here are the parts that I replaced in two years of the printer operation. This is a couple of ball joints, which are very much loose in the first month of work. The rest still work well, and this even though I forget to lubricate them. I also replaced one radial bearing in the one of the gearboxes. After about a year of work he began to click. It didn't affect anything well, mm, except for my nerves. Such bearings are designed for much greater loads than those that they may experience here. There can be two reasons for failures. I pulled the belt too much, or it's just a factory defect because such bearings from China are very cheap. Therefore it's all that I have replaced. All the belts still work and look normal, I pulled them a couple of times, and even then just as a precaution. Besides, such printer works with high quality, with such high quality. This is PLA plastic, a nozzle of 0.5 and a layer of 0.2 mm. I cannot name the exact print speed, because the host programs and slicers do not know how to work correctly with such mechanics, because the actual speed is significantly different from the set. Well, they do not know how, because as I said, such printers are not available. And this is the smallest of the problems of the Delta robots, so there is no point in paying attention to it yet. Next, what are the advantages of 3D printer based on a Delta robot? First of all, it's reliability and durability. There's simply nothing special to break and wear out there. Properly assembled printer will work for years and doesn't require special maintenance. Replacement parts like tips, radial bearings and belts, which theoretically can fail, are very cheap. The second is cheapness. The first version, in the form of which it works now, will cost about $180. This is taking into account the installation of MKS S base control board, which is not cheap. The second version cost me about $280. Well, let it be $300 with the margin. Here is the same control board plus a bunch of additional modules from the same manufacturer maker base. This is a 3.2 inch touchscreen display, a Wi-Fi module, a filament sensor, a printer power failure detector and automatic shutdown module when printing is completed. This is surely not an advertisement. There are simply no other similar integrated and relatively inexpensive solutions. And the third advantage is noiselessness. <laughs> Now you can hear the sound of the first version that works on the built-in DRV8825 drivers with a step divider of 1 by 32. You can only hear the work of motor schooler noise. That is it, there is nothing more to make noise here. And here is the second version. Thanks to the quiet LV8729 drivers with a step divider of 1 by 128, the motors work almost silently. The coolers are much louder than the motors, and you will need to do something about it. Here we turn to what can be called negative sides. 
although these are more likely tasks that can be solved. First is the need to use a control board with a powerful controller. However, this problem has long been resolved. The MKS S base board with the 32-bit ARM Cortex M3 processor is great. Yes, it costs significantly more than a simple Arduino Mega, but the price is still not sky high. The board itself also has one significant drawback. It's built-in soldered on the board drivers of the DRE 8825 stepper motors. Yes, they cannot be replaced, but it's possible to connect additional boards on which you can install any driver. For this, I will have to assemble such a unit with a simple power distribution board and a step-down converter. Luckily, not so long ago, an excellent alternative appeared. This is a big tree tech SKR board. This is almost the same as MKS as base, the same process here. There is no useless network interface, no built-in drivers, but there are normal beds for any drivers that we want to put. Importantly, with the same DRV8825 drivers, a big tree tech board will cost half as much as MKS S base. The overall dimensions of the board are also smaller than that of S base. Besides, according to the manufacturer, the board works not only with Smoothie firmware but also with Marlin 2.0. Unfortunately, I learned about this board quite recently, otherwise, I would be already building a new printer with it, even though the S base board was already in my stash. So, if the project interests you and you decide to purchase components, take the Big Tree Tech board. The second main negative size is the complexity of the design, manufacture, assembly, and configuration of such printers. This drawback follows from the fact that there are very few such projects that can be counted on the fingers. If we take the notorious H-Bots, then such projects are just countless. There are hundreds, if not thousands. The same number of lumps was taken, and the same number of simple, useful and effective solutions to various problems were found. Because a lot of people are working on such printers. They work on them because they are relatively used to manufacture and with the right approach, they work pretty well. The Delta robot requires maximum accuracy, pickiness and precision in assembly and configuration. This lever mechanism doesn't forgive serious errors and tolerances, as the same HBOT does. What does HBOT need to work well? That's right, the X, Y, Z axis should be perpendicular to each other, and the guide shafts, working in the same plane, should be parallel. It's advisable to eliminate the backlash and build a reliable console table, which will not resonate during printer operation. Well, you also need a rigid frame that will not bend when the belt is tensioned. That's all. To achieve this is simple. Especially when assembling, you consider the experience of colleagues who have created many similar projects. With a Delta robot, everything is somewhat more complicated. The main conditions are that the axis of rotation of the shoulders are in the same plane, and that between the planes of rotation of the shoulders is exactly 120 degrees. It's also necessary to very accurately measure and add the constants into the firmware, on which the calculations of the effector motion are based, such as the length of the shoulders, barbels and other things. I will talk about this in detail in the setup video. However, having assembled it properly and set it up once, there is no need to return to this more. This thing just works. As a result today, of the above Delta Robots projects, there is, there is not even one that could be called easy to assemble and configure, and which can be assembled and run without dancing with a tambourine, if we are talking about a printer that should print with very high quality. With the second version of the printer, I will try to contribute to the solution of one of the main tasks. This is the simplification of manufacturing and assembly. As I said, this will be a series of detailed video guides. Probably in the end it will be like a development video diary. Because I will not deceive myself, I doubt that my first self-created Delta robot will immediately work without problems. Surely, have to reduce something. Also, there are ideas and solutions to problems that also need to be tested in practice. The most important thing that I want to achieve by publishing these videos is to spark the interest of talented gadgeteers and engineers to create such projects and joint resolution of the problem. Indeed, the Delta robot has incredible potential as a 3D printer. It's quite simple in design, reliable, durable and very budget-friendly. The price of all components and materials is comparable to cheap Chinese printers, but the print quality surpasses them dramatically. Also, do not forget about silent operation. This is a very important quality for a home 3D printer. If such a self-taught person like me was able to assemble two working prototypes, then this will be possible for others. Besides, I am sure that together we can create a truly popular 3D printer. Good luck to everyone and see you soon!